Hey, it's Rich, the Louisiana Hobby Guy. I got some post-it notes, and I don't want to just throw them around on my desk. So what should we do with it? Uh, I'm thinking that I want to make a box for it. So let's do that today. Stay right there. We're about to get started. Alright, so I'm coming to you in HD today. I can talk with my hands and no blur. <laughs> uh, but anyway, so the question is, what do I do with these guys right here? Um, the post-it notes. Do I just throw them on the desk or uh, do I make something nice, nice and neat, like a little box for it? How about that? And uh, believe it or not, this is easier than you than you think. It might be. I've had a lot of people ask me about making boxes and, you know, making heart-shaped boxes and all kinds of stuff like that. So uh, today, what we're going to do is I'm going to show you uh, exactly how easy it is. Now, uh, here in Lightburn, where do we get started? Well, we don't. <laughs> Typically, it's like, let's jump into Lightburn and, and get started. But today, we're going to start in a slightly different place. We're going to start at this website here, boxes.py. And it's not really boxes.py, it's festi.info slash boxes.py slash something else. But I'll put a link down below in the description where you can just click on the link. If you type boxes.py in your browser, you'll you'll find it. So let's get started. Let's, let's just do this quickly. Let's come over here to, now you see there's all types. And when you pass your mouse over a category, down below on the right, you'll see it light up with a photo. So we have flex boxes, we have trays and drawers, we have shelves, we have slat wall, we have hole patterns, uh, parts and samples. Why didn't the whole pattern show up? I don't know why. Miscellaneous and unstable. I don't, you know, I've never looked at that one. I've looked at all the rest, rest of them, but never the unstable. Today we're going to go to boxes and we're going to click on the down arrow right here. So now with the boxes, I'm going to look through here and I'm pretty sure I saw one already. Here it is. Notes holder right here box for holding a stack of paper <laughs> so if you click on the name over here not over here but over here on the name that'll bring you to the script that will uh, write the SVG for you and it just so happens that all of this is correct a sticky note is 78 by 78 35 let's see I guess that would hold two stacks I think I want to make that 40 so that it can hold three and a little bit extra and over here are your options. You can do finger joints on opposing sides. You can do edge parallel. I want to do stackable. And the reason I want to do stackable is in case I want to, you know, stack another one on top. And the opening at 40 is good just the way it is. The thickness of the material, I'm going to be using uh, three millimeter plywood. So that's perfect. If you have questions on any of these settings here, over here on the right, you'll see there's a little eye icon for information. And if you click on that, it will bring you right here to what you're looking for. The uh, question that you clicked on and it'll tell you everything right here. So all of these things have the little eye icon next to it. So I want an SVG. You can also get an AI, a DXF. Uh, you can get straight G code. You can get a light burn file if you like. And actually, let's do the light burn file. And tabs. I don't want tabs. Basically, tabs are just going to um, not cut uh, small portions, you know, in a few places so that the wood doesn't drop out. I, I don't want the tabs. I don't need it for this. So we're just going to leave zero. We're going to leave everything else the way it is. And like I said, if you have any questions, just click on the I button over here. And that's all I'm going to do. So far, I've done about 14 or 15 boxes from this website. And most of the default settings are going to be perfect. The only one that you might want to look at is the burn correction over here. Um, so the, you want to have a, a low number for a tight fit. 
and uh, I mean a, a low number for uh, a good fit and a higher number for a tight fit. So you don't want to go pretty much too much over 0.1 millimeters because that's sort of like the offset because you want to be able to fit it together nicely. You may want to go 0.2 if you want to force it together. You know, 0.3 you'd have to use a hammer. <laughs> so um, we're just going to say generate at this point. And it only takes a second. And now you see we have a light burn file. So I'm going to jump over to my uh, storage hard drive. I'm going to come down here to light burn and I'm going to go to light burn li uh, templates. And it says notes holder dot LBRN2. So I'll hit save. And that's it. We're done. I mean, it's it's saved right there. So let's get rid of this window because we're done with it already. And we'll come up here to the open folder up here in the top and we'll click open. We're going to go to the same thing. Light burn templates. We're going to come down here to notes holder. Double click it. Here's the message that you get. I'm going to say OK. And there we go. Here is our project. Nice, ready to go. <laughs> How simple is that? It's really, really very simple. All right, so the only thing we have left now to do is set our cuts and layers. And let's get rid of that right there, 100 millimeter designation. And let's just check the size real quick just to make sure. And that is perfect. If we come into millimeters, the width is 84. Height is 52. Um, I think that's perfect. The only thing we have to do is set our cuts and layers. And you see that uh, there are two different layers here. So let's select everything and let's put everything onto a cut layer. I like to use red. It can be any layer you want. And then what I'm going to do is I'm not connected to the laser right now. So uh, that the laser I'm going to use is in the shop next door. So I'm just going to create this and then I'm going to save it to my uh, network and then I'll go next door and load it over there and run the job. So to do that now, I need to load the library for that particular uh, laser, which is going to be the Atomstack M50 module. So now with that loaded, I'm going to select this layer here, which is all cut. I'm going to come down here to basswood, even though we're using uh, plywood. We're going to do the 2.5 millimeter uh, one pass and assign that to the layer and watch up here what happens. There we go. So it's 250, 100%. I know that's going to be a good, a good number to use because I'm in the process of testing this P9 that's on the workbench. Um, so I'm, I'm pretty confident that's a, a good number to use right there. And that's it. So now we've got our layer assigned. We've got our uh, work on the bed, you know, right where we want it. And all I have to do now is save this to my network folder. And I don't need to show you all that. <laughs> so I'm going to go ahead and save this to the network and I'm going to go in the other shop, open it up and start the burn. And I'll bring up that video in just a moment. Okay, so this is the Atom Stack P9. It's a new laser that I'm testing here in the wood shop. And I think I'm going to do this in real time so that, uh, you know, you could see the whole cut. So I'm just going to hit frame and make sure that it's in the right spot. You can see that the laser is firing, which is a nice new feature in Lightburn. And I want to make sure it doesn't go off my uh, work bed area here. I've got my little spiky bed out uh, that hasn't seen any work in quite a while now. I've been using the honeycomb. And that looks perfect just the way it is. Now I've, I've gone to the move tab and I've lowered the speed uh, because I don't want it to frame quite as fast as, you know, as it usually does. So I've put the speed down on this. And that looks good. So I'm just going to hit start and start this burn. Now you can see by the reflection at the bottom of the um, spiky bed 
that it's cutting it cleanly at this speed. This is a really, really powerful little laser here. Uh, it's the 10 watt version and uh, it's doing really well in the testing so far. And in fact, I may have the speed a little too high. You can still see how much light is coming out from underneath it, underneath it. And I don't think you can see it in the video, but I've got my air extraction, uh, my little uh, air scrubber off to the left, and all of the smoke is being sucked out into that, um, into that extractor. And it's actually, uh, it's for soldering. So it's more of a soldering air extractor or a fume collector. And I'm going to be doing a mod that's going to be another video. And uh, I'm going to show you how to make it into a real air purifier for just a couple dollars. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, I think I'll speed this up because it looks like it's going to take a little while. And um, then I'll be back at the end. I don't know if you can see it or not, but there is a steady stream of smoke being sucked into that air extractor right there. And we're down to the last uh, cut here. And let me tell you, this M50 module is an awesome module on all of the Atom stacks. If you have the M50 module, it, it's just a great laser cutter. This one has a superb fan on it where it's almost like an air assist, if you can see by the cuts. Uh, it keeps the lens really clean. One thing I've noticed in the testing, I don't have to clean the lens every day. And that's, you know, that's great. So let's take a look at what we got. Now, I, I really don't like the, the short focus lasers because they, they're just too close to the work bed. But, um, let me see if I can zoom this out just a little bit. There we go. This is what we wind up with right here. Now these little pieces are cut, sorry. These little pieces are cut all the way through. They just haven't dropped out. So we'll just take, uh, let's see. We'll take something like this and we can just poke these out like that. The thicker the wood, the, the more they get stuck. But um, this is a super, super clean cut, as you can see. Super clean on both sides. So let's pop the... That one's good. This one only has one. Let's pop that out. That one's good. This one's good. All the rest of these are good. Now the only thing left to do is uh, assemble it. And the way that you assemble it is very simple. You just figure out which side goes where, and you put them together. Now, I always have trouble figuring out which side goes where, but I know this is the base. And let's just test the fit first, see how the fit is. And this is a really super tight fit. I think I've got that in the wrong spot. But let me see. This I know is the front. So the front is going to fit on something like that. It always takes me a while to figure these things out. I know the front fits on here, so let's try that. And that is a perfect, perfect fit. Look at that. And watch, watch this. This needs no glue whatsoever. It's just perfect. And let's put the other side on real quick. And th this is a perfect, perfect fit. And you can adjust these, these offsets if you like. And you heard that snap in just now? I mean, that it doesn't get any better than that. This is absolutely perfect. Perfect fit. So I'm going to go ahead and finish assembling this.
And there we go. <laughs> now, it, it does take a little uh, finagling to get this just right. Um, you do have to get them in the right spot and give it a couple of good wax. And hopefully you don't break anything. But um, there is the final product. The sticky note holder. And how easy was that? That was just so simple. I'm, I'm sitting here admiring my handiwork. <laughs> now, the, you know, these do fit really tightly together. They need no glue. And it does take a little, a little, you know, maneuvering to get them just right. But um, here is the final product with my sticky notes inside. So now all I have to do is reach in and grab a sticky note, peel it off, and I have enough for uh, two or three pads right there. And uh, what what a, what a beautiful, simple product to make. Uh, it just came out really, really nice, really gorgeous. And a lot of people don't like the, the burnt ends like that. And the reason I'm doing this on the diode laser today is because I do like these burnt ends. I think they give a nice contrast to the actual piece itself. And if you don't like these burnt ends and you only have a diode laser, what you can do is you can sand this. And when you sand it, it'll look exactly the same color as this. And it looks just perfect. So uh, there you have it. <laughs> this, this is a really nice project. It looks really nice on your desk. Um, you know, you should try if you use sticky notes like me. I mean, I, I live on sticky notes, <laughs> even though Windows uh, 10 and 11 have a sticky note feature. I don't like having them on my desktop. I'd rather have them stuck over on my computer over here. So, um, yeah, there's the project. Now, there are all and I'm just I'm going to put this right here on my desk, get started using it. <laughs> this is a great um, 30 minute project. So it doesn't take a whole lot of time. It's very easy to do. Uh, anyone can do it. I suggest that you use a minimum of 2.5 millimeter plywood or else you'll wind up having trouble putting it together because it'll split the wood. Um, but, you know, I've done it with two millimeter, but uh, 2.5 and three millimeter um, and anything above that is even better. Uh, the larger you, you go, the better. So. If you're going to use some of the other patterns that are on that website, for instance, you know, the slat wall boxes and things like that, then you're going to want to use quarter inch uh, because you want it to be sturdy. And if your laser is not capable of cutting quarter inch, most of the modern lasers today are. Uh, if you get your focus right and if you get your speed right, your power and your number of passes, you should be able to cut quarter inch uh, ply with, you know, any modern laser. So even the five watt lasers, maybe you'll have to do five passes, you know, that's just the way it is. But I think that on a 10 watt laser or above, and you know that, um, let's see, Nage is coming out right now. Oh, actually, Nage came out with a four diode laser four six watt diodes for a total of over 20 watts and I know everyone's saying X tool is the first but they're not <laughs> X tool is the second they've copied NJ NJ came out with with the most powerful diode laser on the market and uh, although it, it uh, it's in limited sales right now I actually have one on the way <laughs> that I can't wait to get and test and I also have another NAJ, uh, a big, big one, 800 by 400 and something uh, that's got air assist, uh, light burn air assist, by the way. It's actually got the actual module and the communication. So um, it's got light burn air assist, which is nice. Comes with an air pump, everything you need. Reasonably priced, very reasonably priced. That one is pre-launch and that one's going to be launching next month. So, uh, yeah, that's about it. I mean, making these boxes is a lot of fun, uh, especially when, you know, holidays roll around and especially the, the uh, live hinge boxes. 
like the hearts and you know the 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 boxes that fold around i mean they're they're so beautiful when they're done i've done uh three or four of them so far and every one of them's come out just gorgeous so there's lots of things that you can do with these boxes that um will just make this hobby so much more fun for you so uh, let me know what you think down in the comments um are you going to try it i hope so uh, because it, they're fun to make and really fun to organize your shop with uh, if you have a lot of uh, screws for instance you can do these stackables and put different size screws in the different boxes you know make them shorter uh, I, th there's there's so much that you can do with them to get organized that i think that boxes.py is a great website i should have done this video a long time ago when i first discovered it but um, it's just like everything else on my long list my list that's probably 10 feet, 10 feet long by now if I printed it out of videos that I need to do so I hope you enjoyed the video as much as I enjoyed bringing it to you today and as always I thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one i